Hi, I'm Scott Skirians. I work for the Lincoln Electric Company. I'm here at AirVenture doing some TIG training programs, but right now I'd like to talk to you a little bit about um, basics of holding the torch, some basic clamps, and actually showing you how to grind the tungsten. Um, the first thing I want to talk a little bit about is um, this little little jig we have right here. It's called an extra hand. A lot of times you're, you're in your garage or you're in your shop and you got to uh, do a weld, and uh, there's nobody there to hold it for you. So we've got this little uh, extra hand. It's made up of some scrap material that we put together. And you can see it holds this, this joint configuration really nice. So if nobody's there, um, you can actually use this to um, hold the joint for you. There's also some clamps. You can actually use some different types of clamps to help uh, hold the materials for you before you weld them. And that does a real nice job too. So again, a lot of times you're by yourself. You've got to uh, make a weld and no one's there to help you. You can use these types of clamps. There's different types of shapes and sizes of clamps you can use. But again, this is made of scrap. This is an actual clamp you can actually buy. I also want to talk about holding the TIG torch. This is a standard TIG torch, okay? And there's a couple different ways that you can hold it, and there's a couple wrong ways that you can hold it. So um, I want to talk a little bit about that. The basic way to hold it is kind of like a pencil. You put your, you put your hands underneath and you actually hold the gray knurled uh, parts. That's basically the, the easiest way to hold it. You can actually hold it like a, like a, almost like a baseball grip or a golf club grip like that if you wish. What you don't want to do is hold it back by the back cap because you can snap the back cap off. Also not a really good choice of holding it is wrapping your fingers around the top and getting your fingers close to the ceramic. Because remember this is a 10,000 degree arc gets awful hot, so you can actually burn your fingers. So the correct way is actually to put your fingers on the neural portion or the gray portion of the torch. This gives you the best control if you have to manipulate the torch um, any, any little bit. So once we, we figured out how to hold the torch, <clears throat> to actually make a weld, we've got to grind the tungsten first. And we're going to be welding on this mild steel, so we're going to use actually a 2% thoriated tungsten. And tungsten's come in a box of 10. Okay, this is a box of tungstens here. Uh, there's, notice there's a red band on one end and the other end there's no color. You need to grind the opposite end of the color. You never want to grind the colored end. Because if you grind the colored end and you've got them laying around, you don't know what they are. Um, this one happens to be red. It's designed for steel and stainless and titanium and 4130 chromoly tubing. They make them in different uh, shapes and sizes, anywhere from 20 thousandths up to 530 seconds. But there's a correct way to grind these. You always want to make sure that the grind marks go lengthwise on these tungstens, okay? So I have a little uh, bench grinder right here. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to grind it this way. You always want this, the grind marks going lengthwise. Because remember, this is a current carrying electrode. So if you grind it sideways or the incorrect way, that puts a bunch of speed bumps or little marks on there. So the current will ca has to come down and go over each one of those bumps before it actually gets out of the end of the tungsten. So you always want to grind lengthwise puts the grind marks lengthwise so the current can flow in the same direction as the grind marks. Okay, so never grind the colored end. We're going to gr actually grind the opposite end. I'm using this little bench grinder here, and this is the most common way to grind the tungstens, but some of the problems you run into is uh, a lot of these will have two wheels on it. You want to try to designate one side for tungsten only, because nothing worse than having someone grind a piece of wood or a piece of steel on here and you flip this little uh, protective guard up here. I've got this flipped up because um, for the purpose of filming this, um, we need to have it flipped up so you can actually see the actual grinding. So I've got this flipped up for that, but you definitely don't want wood on here because that would be a contamination. You go with your tungsten and grind over the top, you're picking up that wood or that steel or that plastic or whatever you grind. So try to keep all the, op the other materials for one side. Designate one side for tungsten only, okay? So the first thing you're going to do is definitely put on your safety glasses. Okay, first and foremost before you grind any tungsten, use your safety glasses. Of course, turn your, turn your grinder on. And I'm going to rotate this tungsten as I grind. So I'm actually going to be spinning it in my fingers, okay? That's going to help me get a nice conical point. So once I grind it the way I want it, I'm going to shut the grinder off. And once the wheel slows down, I'm going to actually touch it. So I'm going to have a sharp point with a little flat spot on the top, okay? I'm actually spinning it in my fingers. Notice I have gloves on too. You wouldn't want to touch that grinding wheel with your bare fingers. So once I feel that it's sharp enough for my application, I'm going to shut the grinder off. 
I'm going to let the wheel slow down a little bit first. Once the wheel starts to slow down, I'm just going to touch, touch the tungsten. And now I've got my perfectly sharpened tungsten. Ready to go. So I can put it back into my torch and it'll be ready to TIG weld. Have fun TIG welding.